So, Peter, we're yes. here in Arnott's, um, we where you started out as a window display. I did. Uh, part I of the did. team here. Yes, um, I worked here. I try and figure out what year it was. It must have been. I went to London in seventy one, so it must have been sixty nine, seventy. And now you're obviously designing for Arnott's Back as well. In Arnott's. How does that feel to have come kind of three sixty? It's nice. It's nice. I mean, Arnott's have been hugely kind of supportive of Irish design, and when they asked me to do it, I was really delighted. And it is mm. funny, kind of coming back mm. to where you started out. But it's it's nice being here. Do you ever sneak around the shop and see who's buying your clothes? Um, I sometimes come in on a Saturday. I have done Saturdays, you know, where you <laughs> meet the designer. And I'm really bad at it because I, I'm terrified to tell someone that something looks nice on them in case they think I'm going to force them to buy something. Um, but I do love it when ladies get very excited and they say, does it look nice? And yeah. And it, the last time I was in, this customer, who's a good customer of ours, had bought the one yellow dress we made last year because I got a, a remnant of fabric down at the factory. And we'd made coats this year, coat in the same yellow, mm. there was another remnant. And she said, is it the same, is it the same? And she tried it on over the dress yeah. and it looked great, so she bought it. Brilliant. So, yeah, no, it's nice. To yeah. me. I love meeting the people who mm. buy the clothes. And how did the collection come about with Arnott's? How does the, who approached who? Deirdre mm. asked me, Deirdre, who's the you know fashion director, she said, would you like to do a collection? And I said, I would love to do a collection. And we did. Um, I probably procrastinated for about two months because they're always waiting for drawings and I'm always late. Um, <laughs> we did the drawings, went down to Portugal where the, we, there's a wonderful factory down there which Deirdre had had a little bit of relationship with because they make other Irish brands and they're brilliant at anything tailored. Uh, so we went down, and they do people like Victoria Beckham and Orla Kiley, lots, lots of really great labels. What happens is working with a factory is not unlike working with a premier in Paris. They kind of, they get to know the kind of proportions you like mm. and the kind of shoulder you like. So a lot of it happens, my drawings are fairly precise, but whereas the first two or three collections I would explain for a long time, no mm. tighter there. Um, now it kind of happens by osmosis. So we've, we've a great relationship and they make I would say this, but it's really true. They make a really beautiful product. I think anyone who has, you know, worn your clothes, um, has been lucky enough to wear your clothes, particularly the Arnott's collection, would know that they're very high quality. They are very high quality. I mean, they're and they're really good value because mm. we, you know, we we get them directly from the factory. We use beautiful fabrics. We use the best fabrics we can. You mm. know, within. You know you're selling in a department store, so you have to have some kind of you know parameters. Yeah. Um, but we we kind of work it out, and what the girls do, they do the sums, and we use definitely the best quality we can possibly afford. And um, I drive them all mad. I'm a kind of a stickler for detail. I I tend not to go for applied decoration, mm -hmm. um, but I like I like kind of hidden details like seaming that's interesting or cutting mm. something so very often the clothes look very simple but they're almost mm. invariably not simple at all yeah which is the way I like I like kind of quiet quietly spectacular clothes if that makes any sense <laughs> it's a beautiful description <laughs> and a very apt one um, and you, you mentioned the price points there obviously um, there has been something kind of amazing with your collaboration that uh, Arnott's can afford to keep the prices well it's quite great because you see I, I have see a lot of young designers when they start out they have to find a factory who makes small pr mm. small quantities I, I'm look I'm a gun for hire I come along to Arnott's give them the drawings, the girls work their asses off, they work with the factory, and the clothes come you know, directly mm. from the factory to iron it. So mm. in a sense, they're a real bargain, like they're mm. probably 30% less than they would be in a normal situation whereby a designer has to buy the product from the factory and then wholesale it to, to the mm. store. So it's, it's, they're really, really good value. Mm. And I'm not you know, being yeah. a, a barrow boy in, yeah. On a, on a street market and saying that, but they are. They're, for the quality we give, they're excellent value. I mean, you mentioned there that you're something of a perfectionist um, uh, in terms of quality and all of that. Are you very, are you a big stickler on that? No. I am because I think if you make what seem to be very simple clothes, um, they have to be perfect. Mm. Um, if, you, if a dress is covered in sequins or it's brightly printed, you can kind of get away with maybe it not being so perfect. But mm. I think for the kind of clothes I make for my 
nun-like dresses, as yeah. I sometimes call them. I think they have to be perfect, otherwise they just don't work. And it's the difference of a couple of millimetres sometimes. Mm. You know, if your skirt is bell-shaped or A-shaped or if, it's ga if the skirt is gathered or the panels cut flared or they cut... So they're the kind of details that interest me much more than, you know, mm. lots of... No, I love shiny bits as well. <laughs> but the shiny bits I love are the kind of shiny bits we couldn't possibly sell at department store yes. prices. You know, yeah. I like Francois Lesage embroidery from Paris, but yes. we won't be doing that here. <laughs> Not this <laughs> We're year. We bankrupt <laughs> the fashion department. Um, I think one of the other lovely things is the way how, how nicely everything's lined as well. I think that's that kind of adds a lot of depth to your to your clothing. I remember um, when I worked at Rochas in Paris. One of the trips we went to um, Osaka, I used to go to Japan a lot, two, three times a year. And one of the guys who worked over there for the company we worked for took me to a shop that sold antique kimonos. And he was explaining to me that they're often much more beautiful on the inside than they are on the outside. Mm. It's kind of the opposite of our notion of you know, wearing a bag with a label or people mm. knowing we. Now, they're very into that as well, as you know, because probably nobody buys more Louis Vuitton bags than the Japanese. But the kind of traditional Japanese way of thinking is that if you wear something beautiful, it's for you and not for other people. Mm. So it's mm. hidden on the inside. So I think insides are important. Mm. And I think you know. Yeah, I agree. You know, the person who yeah. wears it knows. Yeah, it makes you feel special when you wear yeah. that dress, you know, even if it's if it's in an everyday colour. Yeah. Or, um, I mean, I think it, it always helps with that kind of sense of um, occasion, I guess. There's something quite theatrical about your hats this season. Is there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I guess there is. There, yeah, I suppose there are... Which one? Um, there's the cloche. And the, oh, yeah, there's the, the mm. I love the chimney pot one, mm. which is really nice, which is a bit like, I don't know what it's like, kind of Dickensian looking, it mm. is a bit theatrical. Mm. Speaking of things on the head. I only like hats you can sit on oh, that won't okay. be damaged. Okay. Yeah. so uh, Like men's hats. Okay. As near as possible to men's hats. Find those masculine twists actually make them timeless pieces. Um, they are based really, well, they're all felt. Mm. Um, so, the, the, I mean, the, the, the basis of them were really masculine hats. As I say, hats you can sit on, you know. Yeah, um, something with a good structure. And even if the shape is a bit feminine, I think there's something kind of solid about the, the felt that I like. And we did gloves as well. Um, we have an excellent factory in Italy. Um, see, I, if you look at old gloves, they're kind of amazing. How, mm. So we try, I try to do those kind of tiny details like buttonholes and covered yeah. buttons and things. Um, a bit Victorian looking really, but there we have those as well and they're very pretty indeed. And with accessories, do you think um, less is more or well, layer up? It kind of depends. You see, I, it's hard to know. You look at someone like Mrs. Apfel, you know, mm. and she has, you know, 47 kilos of accessories on and she looks <laughs> wonderful. Um, I think for most people, I kind of think if you've got a fabulous big P.O.B. hat, mm. uh, you probably don't. It's enough. I, you probably don't need a feather boa <laughs> and 14 we bangles that at home, so. and a pair of drop earrings, you know, I think it's probably enough. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. That was absolutely perfect. Was it? Yes, it was. You gave me so much. Did I? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I feel like I just talked shite for an hour and a half, but anyway. <laughs>